The Deadlands Update 32 has created a cap on critical damage and also hybridized gear sets. This has a big impact on stamina PvE builds. Moreover, Monster Helms can now critically strike, keeping them on par in damage to some mythics. The too long didn't read version? There's a lot of choices with viable options for stamina users from dungeons, trials, and even overland. Which begs the question, what's the meta loadout for the DLC and update? Well, thankfully I have some answers. In this video, I'm going to show and discuss some gear loadouts that you can run regardless of your class with flexible options that are easy to obtain. If you like this video and find it helpful, please click that like and subscribe as well as leave a comment on your gear setup. Meta gear for stamina DPS and the Elder Scrolls Online. Let's go. The first important decision you have to make in your build is what weapons are you going to use and most importantly, why? Currently, there's no right answer to weapon choices and stamina has a lot of flexibility in what you choose. The main advantage for dual wield is the passive twin blade and blunt giving you weapon critical for using daggers. Two hander doesn't have the equivalent and thus giving dual wield a good advantage in PVE. However, two hander has carve, a massive spammable with a shield and bleed damage over time effect at stack. Two-hander also has Executioner one of the hardest hitting, if not the hardest hitting, single target executes in the game, making Two-hander a viable option. Moreover, Two-hander has the Battle Rush passive, a massive boost in your sustain upon killing a target, ideal for folks who struggle with sustain and lower champion points. But Dual Wield has Deadly Cloak, great AoE damage and AoE damage reduction. I look at it like this. If you struggle with survivability and sustain, Two-Hander is a great choice on your front bar. If you're wanting optimal damage and the most damage possible and you don't struggle with those things, I'd go Dual Wield. The back bar is just up to you. I don't see a whole lot of people using bow at top tier end game content. You can choose to use a bow with snipe and poison spray as your front bar setup, but I warn you, most players avoid this because it lacks the overall damage that the other weapons provide. The back bar choice then is up in the air. For a long while, folks used dual wield on the front and bow on the back for the Maelstrom Arena endless hail combination, but now you have many options like the Black Rose Prison dual wield weapons or the two handed with Stampede and VMA weapons for a hard hitting gap closer with AoE damage over time. More on these options later. All this to say, frankly, DPS has a lot of choices when it comes to weapon combinations and options way more than magic that's pigeonholed into double destruction staff. In general, end game trial setup usually focuses on dual wheel on the front and bow on their back, but there's no true one size fits all, so experiment and works what's best for you. For simplicity's sake, I'm going to assume you're going to go with the dual wield bow route, so for the remainder of this video, that's where I'm going to go with with it. Gear loadouts. Now that we talked about weapon choices, next up is the gear loadout. And there are two common choices when it comes to stam DPS, and they go like this. Mythic versus Monster Helm. Option one is the Monster Helm route, and that's a five-piece front bar active only when you're on your front bar, and it usually provides a buff. Five-piece body set that's active at all times and usually is a trial set. Two-piece Monster Helm active at all times with a back bar weapon, only active on the back bar, usually for a specific effect from an arena weapon. Option number two is the mythic route. Really, it's the exact same thing, only you change something out on your jewelry and or your leg and change out instead of running a full monster helm, just a one piece monster. The strength of the Monster Helm route is, is just simple and really easy to obtain. And now that Monster Helms can critically strike, they're on par or outperforming some of the Mythic choices that we previously used. Not to mention, the Mythics are quite annoying to get a hold of and can be really nice if you just want to use a Monster Helm. With the previous meta and the crit damage cap now being in place, people are shying away from the Harpooner's waiting kilt. Now is a staple for a while. The upside of it is, if you maintain 10 stacks, you can do an absolute ridiculous amount of damage but as a stamina melee user you're taking direct damage a lot of the times and the 10 stacks simply fall off making it limited in effectiveness. The other two mythic choices I would consider if you're going to go that route is Death Dealer's Fate and Replacement of Harpooner's Kilt on your jewelry. After one minute in combat, it's going to give you 2,680 stats across the board. That's health, magicka, and stamina. 
all three resource pools are useful and it makes a good replacement that's active pretty much all the time another one for survivability is pale order pale order is really good because the survivability on stamina can be very difficult without massive shields to shield you from incoming damage and this will just heal you and that's your main survivability tool however this patch i really prefer monster helms now that they can critically strike and we have the crit damage cap finding the sweet spot between crit multiplier and crit chance with the monster helm has given me the best results speaking of monster helms the number one set i'd recommend for stam dps in this current update is storm fist from veteran dungeon tempest island a part of the base game the two piece when you deal damage you have a 10 percent chance to create a thunder fist to crush the enemy dealing 277 shock damage every one second for three seconds to all enemies within four meters and a final 9580 physical damage when the fist close this effect can occur once every eight second and scales off your highest weapon or spell damage this does an absolute incredible amount of damage now that it can critically strike and its final strike being physical damage it's easy to see why this is my number one choice moreover this is great in both single target and aoe applications it's great solo it's great in a group and it's great in trials a simple set and forget monster helm that does great in all pve context an alternative to this is veladreth from veteran dungeon cradle of shadows the two piece when you deal damage you have a 20 percent chance to spawn three disease spores in front of you after one second that deal 1557 disease damage to enemies hit this effect can occur once every eight seconds and scales off your higher weapon of spell damage the three spores can be difficult to land but each of them hits very hard and this works well in aoe and single target the downside is landing the sport is difficult so if you have to peel back due to mechanics on your bow and fire off a shot land it and those spores shoot off and the boss is 15 meters away it's kind of just a dead monster helm an alternative to veladreth is saline from saline's web veteran dungeon the two-piece, when you deal martial melee damage, you call upon a primal spirit that mauls the closest enemy in front of you after a 1.3 second delay for 1,702 physical damage. This effect can occur every six seconds and scales off your weapon or spell damage. This thing hits like a truck and has high uptime. Again, it does well in AoE and single target, though it can miss due to that 1.3 second delay coming from the prop. Last one up here is a decent option. That's Crags from Fungal Grotto 1 Veteran Dungeon. What's unique about this set is the one piece as 1487 offensive penetration if you go the mythic route the one piece provides the greatest dps benefit not slime crawl because the medium armor users lack offensive penetration due to not being in their class passives like a light armor and the two piece when you deal damage you have a 10 percent chance to spawn the drew limbs that create shock waves in front of you 249 physical damage every 0.6 seconds for 2.4 seconds this effect can occur every six seconds and scales off your highest weapon and spell damage this does okay damage but combined with the one piece and the ease at which you can get to obtain it it's a great option however overall i consider storm fist is very easy to get and probably a lot of us have it in our collection i highly re recommend this set for all around at update 32 next up is the five piece body set and this is something that you're going to want to be on at all times why well really it's the three piece minor slayer that you can get from these trial set basically giving you five percent increased damage to pve context at all times not to mention that this three piece minor slayer stacks with major slayer stacks with minor berserk and major berserk giving you a lot of damage just from the three piece not to mention the five if you're playing in a coordinated team such as a trials group progression group you'll be stacking as many damage amps as possible weapon damage critical damage and resource sustain the reason you typically don't see two trial sets being run is you don't get a benefit from this three piece option if you're running two five pieces thus it makes sense to keep this heavy hitter trial set on your body at all times speaking of heavy hitters the best five piece out there is no secret it's perfected arms of reliquin from cloud veteran trial or you can do the normal version for a lesser version the five piece your light heavy attacks apply a stack of harmful wind to your target for five seconds harmful winds deal 52 physical damage per stack every one second this effect can stack every half second up to 10 times and scales off your higher weapon to spell damage pound for pound this will provide the most single target damage on bosses as a stamina user and even some magic gear users will use this on their jewelry and weapons because it's so powerful in dungeons arenas and solo i I prefer a different set called Perfected Souls On's Torment from Rock Grow Trial Blackwood Chapter, primarily because I'm not doing very long extended trials, three, four minute fights, single target bosses. 
This set will also give you the three-piece Miner Slayer and the five-piece bonus. When an enemy you recently damaged dies, they leave behind a Vengeful Soul for six seconds. You can create only one Vengeful Soul at a time. Touching the Soul increases your critical chance by 2,160 and your crit damage by 12% for 30 seconds. This set is simply incredible damage, assuming you can maintain the uptime on Vengeful Souls. In nearly all dungeons, you'll have constant ad spawns, so getting the soul doesn't become a problem. Even solo, with 30 seconds for the buff, I feel this benefits me much more than a single target heavy Reliquence, and I prefer this overall in non-trial situations. Another option and one that I highly, and I mean highly recommend for new players, is Vicious Serpent or Quick Serpent, also known as Vicious Ophidian. This comes from the early Craglorn Trials, Hellraw Citadel, Ethereum Archive, and Sanctum Ophidia. It's a part of the base game, meaning it's the easiest obtainable set, and people run this constantly to this day. You'll also get the three-piece Minor Slayer from this set, and the five-piece reduces the stamina cost of your abilities by 8%. When an enemy you recently damaged dies, you restore 2,454 stamina and gain major expedition for 8 seconds, increasing your movement speed by 30%. This effect can occur once every 1 second. This completely carries your sustain and survivability, as you'll need to be constantly dodge rolling as a stam DPS to survive, along with healing. This is what I use to solo VMA, Vatashram, combined with Pale Order to survive as well as a magic build. No, it won't do nearly as damage as Reliquins or Solzons, but you can do the Craglorn Trials very easy nowadays, and it's the first step in getting trials set. There are a lot of other options that are more niche, like Roar of Alkosh or War Machine and others, but if I were you, I'd aim towards a trial set that I've listed. If you cannot obtain a trial set, no problem. There's some good replacements on your body. Kinraw's Wrath, Togvin's, Briarheart, and even Leviathan to name a few. Speaking of those sets, let's talk about what should be on your front bar five piece, and most importantly, why? Advanced Yokuden are also named Berserking Warrior remains the best five piece front bar DPS stamina build option you have in the game. The five piece, when you do martial melee damage, your critical chance is increased by 241 for five seconds, stacking up to 10 times, and this effect can occur every half second. Coming in heavy armor, you'll want jewelry and weapons with preferred daggers as your weapon. You may have trouble maintaining the uptime, so make sure to get to your front bar and keep up the 10 stacks at all time. This way, you'll have Miner Slayer on your body at all times in a great high damage producing five piece that's very easy to obtain. Simply put, the amount of critical chance that you get from this five piece outweighs anything else, making it a staple in stam builds going forward. Some alternatives for folks that do not want to complete trials or aren't able to do that is getting them from dungeons. Speaking of dungeons, these sets I'm going to list here can be obtained via normal dungeons as there's really no benefit from completing veteran or the hard modes unless you want the monster helms or additional drops. Kinraw's Wrath from Black Drake Villa, the five piece, dealing damage with a lighter heavy attack grants you a stack of burning heart for five seconds up to five stacks. While you have five stacks, you generate an Aura of Wrath, granting you Major Berserk, increasing your damage done by 10%. While the Aura of Wrath is active, allies within 12 meters gain Minor Berserk, increasing their damage done by 5%. This is a great damage amp, giving you Major Berserk and everyone around you Minor Berserk. The downside is this. If you go to your back bar for more than five seconds and the entire five piece falls off and it takes five global cooldowns or five or more abilities to get it back up, it doesn't become that useful. Sure, the 5P sounds incredible, but if you have to go back to range or you have to avoid mechanics, dodge, run, heal, and you're going to your back bar for safety, a lot of times this will fall off, not giving you too much uptime. I'm not saying avoid this set, but it comes with ups and downs. And for folks that struggle with light attack weaving and frequent bar swaps, this might not be for you. As a magic user, I much more prefer Kinross because I'm playing at range and can reliably go to my back bar for one or two global cooldowns and don't have to avoid a lot of the mechanics that I do with magic. Melee. In that same vein of the five piece, Togvin's War Van for Frost Vault is a great alternative. The five piece, when dealing critical damage, you gain a stack of precision, increasing your crit chance by 177 for five seconds up to 10 stacks. At max stacks, you also gain minor force, increasing your critical damage done by 10%. This effect can occur every half second. This set is nice because it's not light or heavy attacks, it's merely critical damage. Moreover, the effect can occur every half second, so if you're running 3 to 5 damage over time effects and you have high critical rating, you're much more likely to obtain that 10 stacks and most importantly, maintain. And that's why I prefer Togvin's over Kinross for my Stam melee DPS, because on magic builds, I can hang at range and easily keep up the 5 stacks. On stamina builds, it's a struggle. 
and by far the simplest setup you could run if you struggle with those bar swaps and light attacks is good old Medusas from Arcs Corinium. Now with hybridization, you'll get crit chance across the board and minor force on your front bar. Typically, Stam builds run Barb Trap for the damage over time and this minor force buff. But again, if you're someone who struggles with that or you just want one bar primarily, don't sleep on this set running jewelry and daggers. Two alternatives for folks that don't run dungeons is Briarheart from Overland Rothgar and New Moon Acolyte, nine trait craftable from Southern Elsewhere. The strength of Briarheart is that the five piece gives you healing when you critically strike, making it ideal for people who struggle with melee survivability, and it does decent amount of damage, giving you 450 weapon damage for 10 seconds, though it does have a 15 second cooldown, so you will not have 100% uptime on this buff. Not to mention, if you just start the game and you have access to this area, you can start farming it right away or buy it dirt cheap on the traders. There's even a quest to obtain the dagger, so you don't have to fuss with specifically getting something really difficult on this 5 piece set. The benefit of New Moon Acolyte is it's craftable, and if you're able to do 9 trades, you can get started right away and have a decent front bar set that hits hard. The downside is, well, it has increased cost associated with it. I'd also suggest using these alternative sets on your 5 piece body if you're unable to complete trades. Trials. A great starter setup would be Stormfist Monster Helm, Togman's on the body, and Briarheart on your front bar, so you'll get the healing when you need to. Lastly, don't forget about collecting arena weapons. The one I still stick with today is the infused Maelstrom Arena Bow with a weapon damage enchant using Endless Hail combination to get a lot of uptime on my weapon damage proc and a really good damage over time effect that is AoE with Endless Hail. However, there are more options if you don't want to run a bow and folks have been switching to Black Rose Prison dual wield and running Deadly Cloak in replacement of Endless Hail. The Perfected Spectral Cloak, dealing damage with Blade Cloak grants you Spectral Cloak for two seconds, reducing your damage taken and increasing your damage done by 6%. When playing in melee, you'll have a high percentage of uptime along with damage reduction, major evasion. This set makes you both more tanky and more damage producing. Another great option if you want a two-hander on your back bar is use the Stampede Gap Closer because it provides a great damage over time effect and combined with the perfected Merciless Charge from Veteran Maelstrom Marina, you'll do a massive amount of damage. Dealing damage with a critical charge causes enemies to bleed for 1784 bleed damage over 7 seconds. This effect scales off your highest weapon or spell damage. As you can see here, there's not a one-size-fits-all approach to building the stamina builds. However, if I were playing optimally at endgame, PB, this is how my gear would look. The two-piece monster helm I'd run was Stormfist because of its flexibility and AoE in single target situations. For trials or optimal boss damage, I'd go with Reliquins, or I'd flex that out for Soulzons if I was doing AoE fights, dungeons, or arenas. I'd run all Divine's traits with stamina glyphs on my body. For weapons and jewelry, I'd go with the Berserking Warrior, and importantly, I'd run the Nernhone trait on my primary in charge with a Poison and Fire glyph. Reason being is the stamina build will have enough critical chance with their gear setup and with the critical damage cap specking into these traits should produce more damage very important traits here and that's from the jewelry that's bloodthirsty and this is my priority gold out gear is my weapons and jewelry because it makes the biggest difference in the dps that i've noticed back bar is your weapon of choice though i'm still using the maelstrom bow or stampede vma back bar make sure to have infused with weapon damage in chance so it'll proc max benefit on your front bar is this the only way to build for stamina DPS in this patch? Absolutely not. But I've given you a lot of flexible options, and this is what works for me. Most likely in the year to come in Elder Scrolls Online, there's going to be more gear sets released and probably something better. However, I don't see the majority of these sets being bad or significantly altered, so I plan on golding out my sets and hopefully making it six months or so before I have to replace them. If you like this type of content and you found it helpful, make sure to hit that like, hit that subscribe. It really does help my channel grow. Also consider becoming a Patreon to support my YouTube, and thank you to those Patreons that are doing so. Thanks for watching. Thank you.